Were the eyes or ears or nose or memory playing tricks on them? Did they witness something out of the ordinary course of nature? Shall they keep quiet about it or shall they tell? Shall they tell or shall they keep quiet? They could see the sound. They could hear the light. Plainly, the world held wonders of a kind. A light, a light, a light flickered ahead. Did they see something that wasn't there? What was this light? A flashing light. What are they to believe? A light, a craze, a life. At first, no one seemed to notice. There were no reports. But suddenly, astrology, the Bermuda Triangle, Bigfoot, the Loch Ness Monster, ghosts, the evil eye, multicolored halo-like auras surrounding the heads of everyone. Extrasensory perception, telepathy, precognition, telekinesis, remote viewing of distant places, the belief that 13, 13, 13 is an unlucky number. Many no-nonsense office buildings, hotels in America, pass directly from the 12th to the 14th floors. Why, why, why take chances? <laughs> Bleeding statues, carrying the severed foot of a rabbit brings good luck. Hmm. Razor blades stay sharper in magnetic fields. Phone calls from the dead, all of them collect. <laughs> Prophecies of Nostradamus! Untrained flatworms learn a task by eating the ground up remains of other, better educated flatworms. <laughs> More crimes are committed when the moon is full. Palmistry, numerology, polygraphy, comets, the menace of the universe. Loose leaf tea leaves, the shapes of flames, shapes of shadows, shapes of excrement. And even for a brief period, a Russian elephant speaks. <gasps> oh. The lost continent of Atlantis will rise, prophets sleeping and awake. Diet quackery, 10,000 steps a day, eight glasses of water, faith healers, Ouija boards, the hundredth monkey confusion, spontaneous human combustion, perpetual motion machines, unlimited supplies of energy. The world would end in 1917. The world would end in 2020. The world would end in 2022. <laughs> A small brontosaurus crashing through the rainforests of the Congo Republic. This light was all noise. The evidence was always crummy. There is no laboratory of the paranormal. And now, how have the lights from that night warped after 25 years? What is going on with the light? The light in their hands? When they talk about lights, they are talking quite specifically about every image that shimmers around the edges. A flash of light, a blinding light, an image taken without form and face. Input 10,000 images, output data as infrastructure. Collect, collect, collect everything. Extract the mouth, extract the eyes, extract the movements. Calculate spending, calculate emotions, calculate location. Exponential growth. An eye in the sky, an eye in the sky. I in the sky. Mobilize the arsenal of data. Look at the anomalies in the data. Transform the patterns of the past into predictions of the future. What was to become of this light? Disinformation's web Tangled threads of falsehood spread, truth obscured, misled.
How could a tone become a picture and light become a noise? All of this noise seems like the end. The end. Oh no. Is it the end? The end. If it ended, it would start one May morning as tulips, rapeseeds, and narcissus break the vow of spring silence. An experiment, a discovery, a theory, the theory of relativity. If it ended, Bigfoot would not be resurrected, but the theory of relativity would, written exactly as it was before. Proof, your actions, entangled photons, the physical modeling of Earth's climate, hepatitis C virus and hepatitis D genome, the sign of magnetic super exchange in materials, synthesis of molecular machines, accelerating expansion of the universe through observation of distant supernova, green fluorescent protein, GFP, asymptotic freedom in the theory of strong interaction between quarks and gluons, genetic regulation of organ development, density functional theory, cooling and trapping of atoms with laser lights, split genes, mobile genetic elements, superconductivity in ceramic materials, chemical synthesis on a solid matrix, peptide hormone production of the brain, <laughs> sandwich compounds, the art of organic synthesis, the bubble chamber, <laughs> sex hormones, cosmic radiation, the function of neurons, the scattering of light, typhus, the constitution of the bile acids, plant pigments, automatic valves and gas accumulators in lighthouses and buoys, the structure of the nervous system, spontaneous radioactivity, and yet only now the beginning of the search. What are we living with that is left to uncover? Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Nobel Prize Summit. I'm Kelly Stetzel, and I'm going to be your guide through the day. And so the first thing that I think that we should do is invite out the creator of that piece that we just opened with and have her tell us a little bit more about it, Smriti Keshari. Smriti, that was amazing. I mean, I bet nobody here thought that that was the way we were going to start today. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit more about it and tell us what we just saw? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what you actually saw is inspired by... Oh. Do we, we maybe close a handheld? Yeah, there be we closer go. To me. How's this? Can you guys hear me? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> let's, let's grab a handheld because we have some people um, online as well that we want to make sure get to hear this. Just a second, y'all. <laughs> there we go. Thank you, Ray. Hello. Um, so what you are actually just saw is an original, uh, it's an inspiration from an original Beckett piece called Not I. And it was a form that I came across that I was really fascinated by, this idea of a solitary mouth really a mouth performing, a mouth taking you through this emotional journey. 
I think so much of information that you come across, that you hear, that you experience comes from somebody's mouth. And so when the wonderful Anne Merchant of the National Academy of Science approached me about creating a piece to kick off today, I thought this was the perfect opportunity to be able to adapt it um, around the themes of misinformation and disinformation. One of the central things to all of my work is how can I take audiences on an emotional journey of a subject matter? And so that's really at the heart of this. How can you take someone through an emotional journey of what it feels like to experience misinformation, disinformation? You know, when you look at the misinformation of the past, it's so much around pseudoscience and superstition. And there is an allure, there's a seduction, it's humorous. When you look at so much of the misinformation, disinformation of the present, there is an absolute techno-optimism or a techno-pessimism. There's fear and fear-mongering. Um, but in the reality, and when you think about the most important thing, and that is hope, because the sky is blue, you know, that's where hope is always in the action. And so it was such a joy to kind of adopt it and look at science as action. And so what the amazing Regina was, um, was presenting as she appeared on stage is 123 years of the Nobel discoveries. And... Right? And I just want to say thank you, Regina. That was amazing. And thank you for the National Academy of Science for confronting some of the bold and pressing issues of our time. Oh, thank you thank so you. much, Michi and Regina. Wow.